Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's May 9th, 2012. And um, Fred Mindeland was inspired by Minecraft in an odd way. Maybe you can explain. <laughs> to think about other games that he likes to play with young people in schools, um, and they have to do with string. So we invited Fred to show us how to play with string tonight. Is that a fair enough introduction, Fred? You can keep us going here. Um, and Chad Sansing is with us. Um, Denise Colby is with us again. Thank you. And um, Diana. Malashevsky. Malashevsky, thank you very much, okay. is with no us problem. again as well. Um, and Gail Desler is with us. And I got to say, there were a few other elementary school educators who got very excited to hear about this. Um, and they may be jo joining us as well. Um, Lacey Manship uh, got really excited. She was ex She immediately sent back all of the stuff that she did that day with uh, with string with her kids. Anyway, um, let's see what all the excitement is about string. Fred, welcome. Well, thanks, Paul, for this opportunity. Um, I've been a fan of string games since first learning the Cat's Cradle two-person game as a child. And that was really pretty much all I did when I was a kid. Um, I knew Cat's Cradle, but I didn't really know any others. And then when I was in college studying anthropology, I came across uh, string games in the anthropological context and became fascinated because they are truly one of the, the very few human cultural universals. Um, just about all people throughout the world play with string. And there are fascinating examples of extremely complicated, difficult to make figures that have been independently invented in widely separated parts of the world where there, there's no way that they would have been transferred. It's that people play in the same kind of way and come up with the most uh, obscure, complicated figures. So that part fascinates me. And then, of course, using that connection as an entree to multicultural education and global awareness. Um, but then what really got me excited about using string games pedagogically in the classroom was when I um, started in a bilingual school teaching um, computer keyboarding and found that native Spanish speakers, not just children, but in fact, many highly educated adults don't know the names for the individual fingers. The, the, if you think about it, you, know, you don't say pinky, ring finger, middle finger that often. And in Spanish, they're, they're just words that are not in common use. And um, so in order to teach keyboarding, I needed to give kids that vocabulary. And string games occurred to me as a wonderful way to give kids that vocabulary and also develop some dexterity, which especially my third and fourth graders whom I was teaching then really didn't have. And playing with string is one of those things um, that really develops dexterity in, in uh, a wonderful way. Um, and the other thing I discovered as I started doing string games more and more in the classroom is that it's a wonderful uh, opportunity and example of what we've been uh, exploring in the NWP network a lot around connected learning. Because in fact, when, whenever I'm teaching in a, in a group of any kind, kids or adults, almost always there's a few people who pick up the figure quicker than others. And so I immediately designate those who have just learned the figure as extra teachers. 
who then get to give a one-on-one -on -one to someone of their choice. And by the second session, we're getting close to having half the class as teachers. Mm -hmm. And it establishes that atmosphere of collaborative, cooperative learning where everyone is a teacher. Um, so that's the part that, that really excites me about this. Um, and it's interesting, again, like as with, with so many hands-on activities, ha the way in which those who excel at this are often not the same kids who excel at the more academic tasks. Mm -hmm. And yet it does provide an entree into just those skills because they have to be communicating about what they've learned. Um, so the communication piece is, is also key and very exciting. Um, so I wanted to try as an experiment, I've never really tried teaching string over the web before. Um, and I found it a little tricky to get the visual part really clear. So I experimented with um, doing a recording first through photo booth and then just within iMovie on the, uh, the, the built-in webcam um, and created a little uh, video, which hopefully Paul can share where I give a little bit of that intro and uh, one of the activities that I use before we even pick up the string that I call finger calisthenics and then teaching the first simplest figure that I generally start with. So can we uh, watch the video, Paul? Yes, but let's get a quick uh, go around from our, our other participants here too. Um, Great. I mean, certainly, I just want to put a point on it. Maybe what you heard was people saying very similar things about gaming, about you know who who gets involved and so forth. Um, but I just wanted to know if um, Denise or Diana or Chad or Gail had either experiences with string in the classroom or yourself, or just say hello and say what you think about string. Well, this is Gail. So uh -huh. I grew up, you know, it was something we played, you know, often. Um, sometimes outside, it was often a rainy day recess kind of activity. But, um, and, you know, I never went incredibly far with it, like, you know, like some of the kids did. But, um, you know, I don't know that I'm, I'm trying to think if I've seen it recently. And I've actually been hanging out with a fourth grade class that's been doing a project. Um, they're interviewing doing their, their parents or guardians and, um, you know, asking them about games they played when they were kids. Mm -hmm. um, and that hasn't actually come up. You know, marbles comes up, hopscotch. Um, you know, marbles seem to be the, the most universal, um, you know, for whatever the country. But then again, I never asked them about string. Hmm. You know, and it always, and it seems to me like it's always, it was always something fun, but always seemed like, you know, more like the rainy day recess kind of activity. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see about all the possibilities that Fred's going to share. Um, I, I teach library, but I also teach other things. I'm sometimes the prep fairy, and I, uh, I do dance and drama. And with my kindergarten kids and went a grade three class last year, we did a lot of finger dancing and hand dancing and the funny so that's why Fred when you're going to lead us through the finger and hand calisthenics I'm really intrigued with that because you know we were doing something similar and the kindergarten kids were saying oh my hands are so tired I'm so tired this is so much work <laughs> so it was really uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, tonight's thing but in terms of actually using the string in terms of curriculum, I've never done it. So I'm really, I'm really mm -hmm. enthusiastic about seeing this kind of innovative way of using it. So thanks, Fred. You're welcome. That, that suggests a couple of other extensions that, that uh, I, I hadn't mentioned yet. One is, of course, the, the intergenerational connection. I, I always, when I uh, 
teach a string game, one of the things I tell the kids is, well, if you go home and share this with uh, your parents and ask them if they know any string figures, almost always there's kids who come back with something that either their parents or grandparents or an uncle or aunt um, has shared with them. And the other, the other Part of it is that it, it, there's then all sorts of extensions into art. I've done several projects um, with classrooms where we take a, a, the, the figures that the kids like and actually mount them onto construction paper and put a little explanation and make it into an art project. And okay. last year I had a classroom that uh, we, we do an a there's an annual exhibit at our local art gallery for Dia de los Muertos um, where community groups get together and create an altar um, for the dead around something that's meaningful to them uh, and that can come from any culture, not just Mexican culture. And so I had a classroom of second graders and we did a, a string figures around the world exhibit as our altar in the day of the dead exhibit. And it was just fabulous. The kids loved it and they loved being the, the experts who could share something that uh, a lot of people didn't know. So. I can also see connections with geometry and other kinds of math as well. So, yeah. yeah, I was I was subbing today in a high school geometry class and uh, showed some string games as an example of my interest in topology because it, it is essentially a, a, a topological exploration. Okay, chat, oh, go ahead. Casey. I know, or, I, um, I was gonna something. say, there were a lot of string games in the playground when I was younger and I just never got it. I was that one kid who got, you know, they would show me a million times and I just never got it. So as an adult, I'm, I'm really hoping I get it this time because it's like kind of like poetry. I sucked at poetry in, in public school, but as an, a teacher, I love poetry now and it's kind of a weird thing that's happened. But yeah, I could see, and, and I think, okay, I, I teach in an, in an inner city school, and uh, we have a lot of issues of behavior on the playground, and, and, and a lot of kids just don't know these games anymore. Like, you go out as a teacher, and you say, well, let's do this with the um, skipping ropes, or, you know, tie them together, and you can jump in and out on, and do all these other games, and there's no background knowledge, or something... So having something that, you know, even outside of the curriculum that could be constructive, that would be engaging and perhaps maybe uh, bring down some of the other kind of um, adventure seeking behaviors that lead to trips to the office before the end of recess would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, when, when I spoke to Lacey Manship about this, she mentioned using string, she even called it um, finger knitting um, in some way. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, mm -hmm. but, but she talked about it as a way to help kids deal with being bored in an assembly or something, for example. So it does seem to be about how to capture attention or how to redirect attention in positive ways. But I hear that being used that way. Another really powerful aspect that, that uh, I definitely want to explore is uh, strings for storytelling. Mm -hmm. There are many mm -hmm. figures that have multiple steps and uh, I've learned several stories from books and I'm now exploring inventing my own stories with the figures that I already know um, as an entree to storytelling, story structure, and bringing out that kind of creativity uh, in kids. I just want to check in with Chad and then we'll kind of get started with actually doing some of this. Chad, are you there? Yeah, hey, this is oh. Chad. Um, 
I, I'm really drawn to what Fred was talking about, the storytelling, um, and also going back to kind of not just finger weaving, but tapestry and embroidery and doing things with string with your hands, just with the string and then with other things to, to tell a story. Um, I was like a, a yo-yo dilettante, uh, but I could only <laughs> handle like one yeah, string yeah, yeah. with something on it, kind of going up and down at a time. My, uh, my spatial skills are such that uh, knots often confound me. So uh, I look forward to some really practical participatory connected learning tonight in terms of manual dexterity. Um, but I'm also very interested in the role that string games, but also you know, what people use string for, for, for storytelling and tapestries and things like that. I'm very interested in that. Okay, um, I'm trying to share a screen right now, which I think I'm doing. I gotta mm -hmm. tap a couple more things here. And there is, is, is the video on? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play. It's not real loud, so listen up. And Fred, I think you might be able to talk over it. Even though, let me just see, does that do any difference? No, okay. Ready, let's play. Hello, everybody. The beginning of our uh, string exploration is what I call finger calisthenics. So the first thing I always ask kids to do is to put their hands up and stretch their fingers out as wide as possible. Then squeeze them together as close as you can. And now we're going to separate the middle and bring them back together. It's really important that we do this with both hands at once because the whole idea is we're developing strength and <laughs> oh, <God>. in the <laughs> fingers like you can't do except by playing a musical instrument that takes both hands. And there are very few that are actually symmetrical on both hands. Piano is probably the, uh, the one. Um, Otherwise, these activities and string games are the only things that are going to really develop that strength and dexterity you need for computer keyboarding. Then, you're going to separate the outsides oh. and bring them together. Now, the tricky part is switching back and forth from one to the other. Open in the middle, open the outside. Open the middle, oh, open the outside. Now I'm glad my camera's not working. <laughs> it's a challenging activity for most kids and for Had many a adults. Five teachers it's actually a neurological test that my father learned in medical school in the 1920s, and I've done it in classrooms ever since. It's fun, and it really does develop that dexterity. The second one, which again is really just a sort of brain training um, dual hemisphere exit. Fred, I'm going to pause one second. Uh -huh. um, sure. I think, so do you, and you can talk over this, by the way, I think. Um, but um, what was I going to say? I was going to ask, so is that is that an exercise that you would recommend doing when you get up in the morning or when you get ready to do things or? Oh, well, it, you know, I, for uh, most adults, it's really sort of beside the point um, because we've already done lots of things where we've developed that dexterity in, in, in especially for this kind of group, we already know computer keyboarding. It's, it's not the entree that, uh, that I'm looking for with kids. Um, with kids, it, it is such a challenging activity. Many, many kids will say, oh, that's too hard. They won't even try. The, the, it, it, it's, it's a great little sort of differentiator. Who is willing to experiment and, and do something new and, and novel? Um, you know, so okay. the, the, um, the challenge is uh, in, in many ways just sort of following directions and trying something new. 
Um, and the next step is one that is pretty easy to demonstrate this way. Um, if you make a fist that you look at and then point at it with your other hand, and now you're going to switch to the same thing on the other side. And then switch back. And as you try to do that more and more quickly, you will find your hand and brain not quite meeting each other for most people. Um, so again, it's just one of those exercises that um, creates a, a, a novel situation for kids. Um, Look, Fred, I want to introduce Lacey. It looks like you're here. Is that you? Hi. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Welcome. Um, and we haven't gotten too far yet. Fred, I, let's play the rest of the video, and then um, it, we'll, we'll keep going. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let me try to bring that back. What did I do? There we go. And then... This is already really fun. <laughs> Good. Okay, so we've got about four more Five minutes on here. Let's see. You make a fist, then you point at it with the other hand. Now switch. Ooh. Then switch back. Switch again. And now see if you can do it a little faster. And a little faster. Very fast. So those are the two finger calisthenics that I always do. I've just been uh, alluded to a few other similar ones, um, but that's a good intro. And now I'm going to try to add some commentary to our first string figure activity, learning the uh, Karok fish spear. And I'll introduce the figure a little bit now. This is a figure that I didn't actually learn from the uh, Karok tribe on the Klamath River and the Salmon River in Northern California, where I used to live. I learned it from a book, but it's wonderful to think that this is a figure that was actually done by the people where I used to live. And it's a three-pronged spear, and one of the advantages of that design is that with the distortions that throwing a spear into the water give you visually, if you have three prongs that can go in three different directions, essentially, you have a better chance of overcoming that distortion effect. So now I'm going to show you the video of how to do the corrupt fish spear. Okay. To do the corrupt fish spear, we're going to make a single straight loop between two thumbs. Should we do this, Fred? Yeah, try it while while it's going on. Okay. Called position one. Now, one index finger goes under the thumb. Is that about three three feet of string? Wait, wait. It's about six feet of string. Okay. I put it on pause. Just pause. Second dip. Now. Oh. Didn't pause. Okay. So let me check. Is everybody ready? <laughs> I have my string. Okay. So Fred, this is fast. Do I have to learn this? this fast? Okay, wait, okay. Here we are. Yeah, okay. And and the string the string is knotted, right? So it's a it's circle. Or an endless loop. Yeah, you want to make an endless loop. Everybody ready? I'll go. Sure. I'll go back a couple. Yeah. Can of, you put it back a little bit? I will do that. <laughs> How young can kids do this, Fred? Well, I've taught uh, this figure to kindergartners with okay. um, some success. Generally, um, once kids are in first grade, the simple figures are pretty accessible to them. And by second and third grade, they can do very complicated figures. Okay. Um, I, I, with my second grade class, I had kids who uh, did figures that involved 15, 20 steps. And wow. uh, 
you know, this, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you you said earlier that um, like some kids get it at first and then they teach their peers. Is that right? Gen right. That's that's to me the most exciting part of this whole process is mm -hmm. creating a community of learners through um, having kids who get one figure. It also varies between among the different figures. Some kids will learn uh, one figure very easily and then have trouble with another. Interesting. So um, there, there's a lot of variation in that and it, it provides just wonderful opportunities for kids to share um, with each other. Okay, so we're making the three spear Long thing. Spear. <laughs> Okay, we're going to make a single straight loop. So there's the the, uh, thumbs, the loop between the little fingers from the, the thumbs. Left. Mm -hmm. Can you see more? Then the little and fingers go little in from the bottom. Oh, I didn't miss. I missed that part the first time. The side, and then before you come back across, you then that index twice. goes under one of the palm strings, and then you. Twist it around twice. And notice as you bring that back to the other hand, from where you, you want to sort of drop those strings down so that you can see how, I'm going to show that right up in the camera, the... Uh, Dang it, I'm not already there. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up the other palm loop from in between the two that you picked up. And as you're picking that up, you drop the thumb and little finger, and there's your three-pronged fish spear. Okay. Oh, man. So here's a learner's so response. basically three steps. It helps. <laughs> okay, that's helpful. But it also helps me to see the end first, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway. Are you going to do it again for us here in the video? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just do it on the on the camera. Everyone um, ready? Okay. Oh. Go really slow, Fred. Really okay. slow. <laughs> what do you mean you're? So should I shut the video off? I think we can shut the video off. Okay. And, uh, I'll just work here. <laughs> yeah. Then we can say stop. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Hear the <laughs> angry scream. Wait! I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Lacey, you have some string? I've got string. Okay, I've got good. A lot of string. All right. All right. Okay, Fred, we're going to put you on. Go for it. Tell us one more time. We're going to try this. Really so you, super slow. You put your two thumbs into the loop. Make sure it's a straight loop. Mm -hmm. What often happens is kids will have a little X or several yeah. in the middle of the loop. You don't want an X in it. Okay. You want it to be a straight loop uh -huh. between the two thumbs. I can't then see your you're gonna. Anymore. Oh, there they are. Okay. So now <laughs> you're gonna put your little fingers into that thumb loop from below, uh -huh. so okay. that you have the string behind each thumb and behind each little finger, and there's a a string on the palm. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Hey. I I'm with you. Okay. I think I got that's, it. That's what you got. Okay. Thumbs up. Keep going. <laughs> it, in string figure parlance, that's called position one. Okay. Position one. So now with the index finger, you're going to reach across and put that index finger under the loop on the other palm. Uh -huh. So you start to pick it up, but don't pull it too far. Just pull it out about a few inches. And now, while it's sort of hanging there in that space, you dip that index finger around twice. Ooh, I missed that the first time. Okay. Right. What if I do it three times? Is that bad? So now, three is okay. Even one usually will work. But okay. Two is mine not, recommended. Mine's not twisted in the middle there. It's twisted around my finger. Um, maybe it's sticking or... Anyway, it's it's supposed to. Paul has it. 
<laughs> you can show me. <laughs> yeah, you can show. That's okay, cool. So now, showing mine doesn't look like that, but just keep going anyway. The hand that you that you pick that string up from, you want to sort of drop down so that you can from. see the loop you made, the loop you made the loops in, uh -huh. dropping sure. down over drop, right? the palm string on the other hand. Okay. Because yep. you want to be able to see how that palm string is in between the two strings that hang down. That's what you're aiming for with the other index. Okay. You're going to go under that palm string in between the two index. Oh, okay. The two index, index strings. Okay. Yep. Now, as you pick that up, but before you pull it across, uh -huh. on the hand that you pick that string up from, you want to drop the little finger and drop the thumb so that it's only on the index finger of that hand. Can you use your mouth? Yeah. You could if you need to, sure. All right, that's what I did. <laughs> okay. And now when you just pull over. that index over, what there's index the fish spear. What index over? No, it Wait. doesn't work. What? Yeah. Hey, we we have one success. No. <laughs> you oh got gosh. it. I did the last step wrong somehow. Good well, let's you. go back to the beginning. That's right. Should we try? Wait. It's everyone game to try this again? I don't know, know what kind of radio this right. is, but that's okay. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Do it one more time, Fred. Let's so, do this. Okay. All right. There's the loop on the thumbs. On the okay. two thumbs. Wait a minute, I can't see your thumb. It's out of camera range. Oh, there <laughs> yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so that's what I was thumbs. experimenting with with the video is how to get the angles so you can yeah. see both hands. It's it's pretty tricky. There's the thumbs. Okay. okay. So you have your two thumbs. Now the little fingers go into that loop from below. And reach across with one index finger, go under the string on the palm. As you pull it a little bit away from the hand, you dip that index finger down twice. Uh -huh. So you put two little loops in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then when you stretch it back and drop that hand you picked up from a little bit so you can see the palm string on the other hand, and you're aiming for the palm string that's in between the two index strings. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're going to pick that up with the other index, I swear I got and this. as you pick it up, mm -hmm. you drop the little finger and then the thumb. The wrong hand. Oh. Right. And then when you it. pull it, Yay. all right. <laughs> Quick, get a camera you got. Oh, wait. Wait. You guys, we are on camera. Tell you, no, I'm not. I'm telling my own kids. Look, I did it. Wait, who's who's saying that? We can blog about it next this week. Diana. Diana got it. I know. I, I finally got it. You're not on camera. I know I'm not on camera. I'm telling my children to get a digital camera and take a picture of it. <laughs> oh, wow. Right okay, wait, wait, wait. Can, so can I see what it looks like, the finished product? Can, can you hold it up? Yeah. Do it fast, Fred. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Well, I there. clearly need some remediation. <laughs> <laughs> so, hang on. So, um, what happens to the kid in a classroom where, okay, so the first time, Denise got it, right? Right. And then the second time, now Denise and myself got it. Are there ever kids that never, ever, ever get it? And I, I didn't get it, but I'm not going to admit this, it. <laughs> this figure is is simple enough that just about everybody I've ever tried to teach it to will eventually get it. Except I us. have in <laughs> out of probably a thousand kids that I've taught string games to, I've only ever had one child say, I don't want to do this and opt out entirely. So um, maybe that's the point, that it's not about getting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and frustration and and overcoming obstacles, right? 
Yes, and learning how to fail, learning how to make mistakes Which is important. Yeah. and try it again. That's, that's a, a, a wonderful thing. The other thing that I love, I, I was just reminded uh, of that feeling of, of tremendous accomplishment when we get to that point where the whole class has learned the figure and one of the things I do with that kind of group where we've gone through that process is to say, okay, now everybody knows it. Let's all do it together silently. Ooh. The, the idea like of exactly people doing something together in silence can be so powerful. Okay, I'm gonna, here's the scary part now. I'm going to try and repeat it, and I'm kind of scared now. But <laughs> Craig's like, not saying it. So, wait, who's, who's saying that? I can't see. It was Diana. That was Diana. Okay, thank you. Sorry. That's okay. So, Diana, what are you going to, yeah. you're, you're going to explain it to us, or just? No, no! I'm not <laughs> on stage yet! Uh. I'm still level two! <laughs> When you don't get it, and then when you do get it, you sort of go, oh, I know what I did wrong. Oh, right. I was mixing up my left hand and my right hand. Right, right. Casey is yeah, joining us. Thank I you. Casey, you, or Kelsey. Kelsey, I said the wrong name. Kelsey, welcome. Can you talk yet? I think so. Can you hear me? We can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we yep. hear you. Hi. Okay. Kelsey, I wanted to check in with Chad. Chad, did you do it? Yeah, I, I've achieved fish beer. Yay! <laughs> You've unlocked a new achievement. And what's your evidence, by the way? <laughs> I'll, I'll, say, I'll, I'll tweet it, dude. Right. <laughs> Look for the tweet shortly. Okay, we're going to hold you to that, Chad. Uh, I'm doing it now. All I'm going right. to find out a way to take a picture of it while it's in my hand. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Kelsey, could you introduce yourself briefly and then tell us if you play string games? I'm Kelsey. I'm a seventh grader at KB. My dad's a teacher. He's introduced me to this, and I do play string games. What kind? Nothing fancy. Jacob's letter, such things like that, being a pain in, but all I have is shoelaces, so that's what I'm doing it with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kelsey! Can you Kelsey. Have a three spear, Chelsea? Can you do three-pronged spear? I don't think so. Because that's just what Fred was showing us. There, there are several figures like that um, that a lot of kids know. Uh, one is called Witch's Broom that has four prongs instead of three. And um, there are several like that. I, I'll share now one of the, the, the uh, original stories that I created around the figure, if I can uh, get the display to work. Good. Um, this is a, uh, let me Sounds like Kelsey's move. dog is there. <laughs> yes. Move the chair a little bit. So okay. It, uh, it's a little easy to see, I hope. So um, this is a, uh, a story that I tell about a little crab. The crab has these pincers. Right, that represents the crab. And the crab is being chased by an octopus, which I represent with the, uh, the moving fingers and get kids to guess that it's an octopus. So the crab is being chased and he runs along and he finds a cave and he goes ducking in the cave, but he can't find any place to hide. So then he finds a second cave, and he goes into the second cave, looks around, still no place to hide. Finally, in the third cave, he goes in, and he sees a little pile of seaweed in one corner, 
and another pile of seaweed in the other corner. So he gathers up all the seaweed and piles it on top of himself so he's well hidden. And then who comes along? And of course the kids. <laughs> and I say, good guess! But it wasn't the octopus, it was the scissor fish. <laughs> and there really isn't a scissor fish. I made up the scissor fish for this story because I love the idea of the scissor fish who comes in and goes munch, munch, munch on all that seaweed. And the little crab ends up sitting there all exposed. And then who comes along? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh man. The <laughs> octopus comes along, and the, the little crab has tried running, and he tried hiding, and he decides, well, the only thing I can do is see if I can scare him. So he jumps up and grabs one of the legs, and the octopus runs away. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> wow, a whole new genre. I would have made a fish beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Fred. So do kids tell stories, or how do you...? I, I get uh, kids telling stories, making up uh, figures, coming to me with a, a uh, sort of mess of string that doesn't look like much to me, but they explain what it is, and, and uh, I appreciate it as a story. Um, it's it's delightful, especially with the younger kids, with with uh, kindergarten and first graders. They will do almost anything with the string, and then just start telling what it is. So it's a great <laughs> springboard. By nice. the way, somebody mentioned earlier um, being a librarian. I don't remember who, but Damn. there's a wonderful oh, yeah. series of books by a Canadian librarian named Camilla Grisky, G-R-Y-S-K-I. Um, she's written three or four books on uh, string games with stories, with wonderful explanations mm -hmm. and diagrams of how to make them. Um, so that's a, that's a great resource. Lacey, can you talk to us about string games in your classes and how you've used it? Um, yeah, a little bit. I, um, I'm really interested in doing more with string games now, especially. Um, I spend a lot of time, though, doing finger knitting um, with my kindergartners and first graders. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, they would much more elaborate than me using all five fingers. Um, but I've taught them how to finger knit and... Can you hold simple. it up a little bit? I, we can't quite see. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It just started with a simple um, loop on the other end. Um, just a loop around my finger. Like and a simple little knot. And then another loop. And then the front one, the back one goes over the front one. Oh, it's supposed to stay on my finger. And pulls down. And if you keep doing that over and over, then you'll just kind of get a nice little chain going. And the kids, we're really fascinated with this and some of them who like really like needed something to do at times when um, maybe they needed to sit for some reason um, would love to do this. So they would kind of carry them around on their hands all the time. And um, you know, if there was something kind of um, like an assembly um, going on, they would all take these and they would just, you know, it seemed like they were so wonderfully attentive at things like big school assemblies, but really they were just all sitting there finger knitting. <laughs> <laughs> and we would use, you know, really pretty yarn. They would tie them in their hair, <laughs> bookmarks. So that's my um, string story. 
Wonderful. You know, I have something to show go ahead. people. Kelsey, go ahead. I, I learned how to finger knit a while ago, and now I have this big, long chain Holy of stuff that I don't know what to do with, but it's fun. <laughs> No, I don't know. So another real great thing about things like finger knitting and stream games that uh, Fred maybe talked about is just the wonderful fine motor activity. Um, you know, that's really useful for little kids in building up those muscle skills um, that might be useful for typical kinds of writing or typing um, that they want to do. So I would actually, in my daily lesson plans, also put um, things like finger knitting instead instead of things like handwriting practice. Um, these kinds of fine motor skill building actually doing the same kind of work in a much more interesting way. I feel yeah. like I've had a whole new world opened. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> so how much it? is the teacher's comfort with doing it? How, how much does that impact the use of string games and finger knitting and things like that? Fred, do you know, or anybody well, else? Well, because oh, you do it so that. well. Like, you look like you could do it with your eyes closed. And well, I'd like to, you know, kidnap you, bring you to my school so you could do it. Because I'm thinking, well, it took me, you know, I, I was able to make the, the three-pronged screer, but if you ask me to do it by myself, I can't do it. Little practice, you could get there. Yeah, yeah. It is one of those things that that uh, again, like like so much of uh, innovative practice, it, it takes a bit of bravery to model um, failure and a learning process in front of your kids. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it takes somebody who's willing to take some risks. That. I like that. You have to be willing to model failure. I like that, what you just said. Cause That's a really good line. Yeah, I know. Chad, really you could line. tweet that. Yes. <laughs> All right, tweet it on now. It. <laughs> I'm on it. Get ready. I, I wanted to, as an adult, <laughs> um, not dismiss like what the children are doing. Like We could do that, too. All the mindfulness that Howard Rheingold has, have, has had us think about like maybe there's something about manipulating your hands and all that that we could use to kind of train our brains it's not just our fingers in some way you know what i mean so and this is a whole nother story but jane mcgonigal's new um new wonderful toy that i've been playing with with my kids is called um super better and one of the things that's suggested in Super Better is that you just open your hands up and leave your palms out like that for, you know, five seconds. And it changes the way you feel and think, right? So if that happens, then, you know, doing these string games is, is, a, is adjusting your, your, your attention in some way, mm. I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm really down with that, Paul. I think that, you know, there's kind of an embodiment of, um, you know, um, ways of being or ideas as we're sitting here doing things with our, with our hands and um, putting our focus on that and creating something. Yeah. One of the things that intrigued me when uh, uh, I thought of the idea of, of uh, doing this session was the uh, kind of funny double entendre of uh, this as a digital activity because we're using our digits mm. and <laughs> there, there is that digital aspect to it. <laughs> That's another tweetable one there. <laughs> and, and, and I think, you know, I guess when you're introducing the string games, it's one of those things that even if you as a teacher only know a few, mm -hmm. I'm sure 
if once the kids are hooked, they will go to YouTube and they will go to Google and they will find a whole bunch more that they'll come back and share with you to increase the the classroom's knowledge of what's out there. There's a wonderful uh, YouTube video of a young man on a Navajo reservation being taught a figure by his grandma. Um, and it, it, it just watching, it's, it's actually hard to learn the figure from the YouTube video, but it, it's just delightful to see the relationship between this young man and his grandma and, and the interaction there. So Fred, can you put together um, you know, like a, a set of links of resources you'd recommend that we check out? Absolutely. I've started in uh, Youth Voices. Good um, place. A, <laughs> uh, a string games section. And I put a little intro to this session up there. And uh, I was trying to post the, this uh, video that I created, but I had a little trouble with that part. So I'll check with Paul on that. Um, and yeah, I want to. I want to develop. I, I feel like this is a, a connected curriculum that is applicable <laughs> at basically any grade level, um, and just has so much wonderful potential for extension in lots of directions. Mm -hmm. Digital learning. I. <laughs> Can I have you lead us one more time through the the three pronged spear again? Sure. Ready, Kelsey? Yay. <laughs> okay, okay, no pressure, no pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here we are with the... I know how to start. I've got my thumb, thumb to thumb. The thumbs, then little then fingers. The little fingers go in from the bottom. Now, one index finger is going to reach across to go under the string on the opposite palm. Mm -hmm. You bring it out just a few inches and then dip twice, so you put two loops in it. Yep. Then when you reach back, you drop that hand down that just did the pickup so that you can see the loop mm -hmm. that hangs down and the palm string on the other hand that's in between those two. Yep. You dip your index finger under that, and as you're pulling away, you let go of the little finger and the oh, thumb. I let go of the wrong one. And there's the three strong <laughs> spear. Yay! It wasn't a fluke! I did it. <laughs> you know what? It also it you appreciate it really instruction. I, I think that listening to the, to somebody else explain how to do it and explain multiple times mm -hmm. as a teacher, as an educator, you mm -hmm. really appreciate how important it is to be clear. You know, take your time and language. Be precise and detailed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean the the. Uh, I, I think like a few people miss. For teachers. A few people missed the very beginning. I was talking about how my original impulse for bringing this into the classroom was trying to teach keyboarding to Spanish speakers who didn't have the vocabulary for the names of the individual fingers. It's not common vocabulary in Spanish. So as a way to present that vocabulary in an interesting way, I started doing string games and just snowballed from there. Another little, uh, little tip that, that I love giving to kids, and, and I've had some feedback from a few kids that they actually did this and it helped, is so once you've done it a few times and you think you know it, then when you go home, do it right before you go to bed, and then do it again as soon as you wake up in the morning. Talk about mindfulness. And if you do that, yeah. you'll never forget it. <gasps> I did it by myself without Fred saying it! <laughs> It Listen. might be an interesting thing to add on to that, to even say, take it home and teach someone in your family how to do it yes. as a way to really cement it. Right. And also bridge some some uh, discussions with the family about what you did in school and, and bonding. Yeah. 
And that also has often brought up um, uh, parents who may not have done string games, but who know knots and knotting, mm -hmm. and will bring that into the classroom. Oh my God, um, I did it again. <laughs> Fred, um, we should uh, be wrapping up, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to maybe tell another story or show another one to us fast. Just kind of impress yeah, us here at the end. There's one really fun one that, that I was uh, reminded of when I, I forget who it was that was talking about the finger weaving. Um, there's a finger weaving. So you start with the loop just hanging down from the little finger. And you're going to bring the far, the string that's on the far side over and then pick that up and drop it over the ring finger, then loop it again, and then I have to do it fast to remember. <laughs> Interesting. Right. So uh, I'm just going to do Go it. Go ahead. Just, we'll just watch <laughs> you do it, yeah. So there's the, the, the weaving, and the story that goes with this is I say to the kids, okay, so here's the little worm who's just stuck his head Hold it up, a little up out of the ground. And what happens to a worm when it sticks its head up and it sees the sun? And the kids will always say, oh, he drops down. So then he goes down. Mm. <laughs> I'll do it again quickly. That was a quick story. <laughs> so there's the little worm sticking his head up and he sees the sun so he disappears oh I see <laughs> so the, uh, string games um, and nodding are kind of different genres quite different and um, you know the, the, the string games are really um, pretty much just games in that sense of being um, just for fun. Knots are almost always quite a practical exercise. Mm -hmm. you're, you're making a knot because you, you want to accomplish some piece of work. You want to uh, cinch something to something else or I think uh, Kelsey, creating... I think I think Kelsey proved that that's not necessarily true, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> retired. Um, Kelsey, I, sorry, Fred. Kelsey, it was so great that you joined us. Can you, do you know if you can get rid of that blue on your screen? I don't know what it is, okay. so I don't think so. We'll leave it there. That's okay. I just wanted to give you a chance to teach us uh, a kind of simple one that you do. And then we'll sign off. Was... Can you show us how to do that? Yes. Okay. I can untangle my. Go really slow, cause we're not as good as you. <laughs> okay, I can do that. And does that one have a name, Kelsey? Cat's whiskers. Cat's whiskers. Okay. 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 So you just have it. There we yeah. go. Around your pinky, like that, gotcha. on both hands. And then you run your index fingers. Through. Right. And then, hold on, I gotta make sure I'm doing this right. I like the internet. And then you drop your thumbs. Hold on. There you go. And then you reach all the way under. This is really hard to see through the blue. You reach all the way under like that and grab the very last string with your thumb. Oops. Oh, it came off. No. <laughs> Keep going. It's okay. 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 And then you go, you take the second one. <laughs> really hard to see. Yeah. It's okay. We got <laughs> it. Second one. <laughs> second one. The second one. Uh, what, do you, what do you do with the second one? So with your thumbs, you're going over the first to pick up the second. Yes. Over the first to pick up the second. Okay. Everybody oh, got it? it? And then you drop your pinkies. 
so uh -oh. there's no string on them. Uh -huh. And then you take the second string from your pinkies, you go over the first and take the second. We can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find the second string? Just keep going. It's okay. Yeah, we got it. Okay. We got it. Good. Good. Uh, keep going. And then you drop your thumb. And then you got it. <laughs> Very cool. I, I got a big loop. Oh, I see why it's a cat whisker. Oh, cool. Right. And I always make the kids then put it right up under your nose. <laughs> Very cute. Kelsey, thank you so much. Um, Yay! <laughs> and thank all of you. Listen, we're, this was show 296. And, um, you know, I've been thinking recently about how being in a hangout like this is different than it was before. Um, and I think this uh, show demonstrates some of that. <laughs> Uh, because of all the video and visuals, it's possible here. But at any rate, I think, um, yeah, thank you. Anybody want to say, like, um, what, um, Gail, Gail said it's a new world for her, <laughs> but what, what you're thinking or feeling here, and then we'll close out from there. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I really want now a face-to-face -face meetup with the string <laughs> group. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm getting those books, too. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully I'll be better at yeah. this than I am at Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dangerous in that. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm going to be in the morning tomorrow with a group of eighth graders. So I'm I'm going to take some string with me and see if they can teach see me. See what stuff. they know. Yeah. <laughs> I have a student who's who I found out does crochet, and her, I mean you know this 18 year old girl. Um, anyway, and she didn't learn it from her parents or her grandparents or anything. She learned it in an after-school program, <laughs> which is kind of wonderful. Um, and her inquiry project, uh, just bouncing off what Gail just said, is to think about what's her best way of learning crochet now. Like there's a lot on YouTube. Uh, she could learn from books. She could learn from other people. But just like what, what helps her learn the best? All right. but and she brings in wonderful things every day, <laughs> so it's just nice to out her as a, a crocheter. <laughs> but uh, anyway, any other final thoughts? <laughs> I really I want to try it. I want to take it tomorrow, and now that I know how to do three prong spear, even without Fred, <laughs> I'm going to do. It. And I love the idea of the doing it. The, the, the collaborative teaching, the focus on you being metacognitive about your instruction practice, and that hmm. I, I, I'd like to be able to do it so that we can all do three prong spirit together in silence with some music in the background. <laughs> June assembly, that's my goal. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Chad, do you have any thoughts there? Um, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm arriving three decades later, so to just textiles in general. So um, I, I have some, some thinking about this spring and, and next year that I will add string games to with all kinds of other, um, you know, physical artifacts of, of textile. Yeah, and there's the whole notion of play in this also. But yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Denise, any thoughts? Um, I don't know. I just, this is, I'm, I have a lot of thoughts. I'm thinking of ways you connected to even uh, social studies or um, right. just even doing like storytelling. I, if the students can figure out different shapes like the three prong spear or chairs or whatever uh, using the string, they could do some really creative storytelling. I mean, we use props in storytelling all the time, but this is, this is a much more imaginative prop because it can be so many different things. So that would be really interesting. And teaching string art in Minecraft will be the next thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the next patch, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah.
<laughs> okay. Um, thank you it's all. It's easier with blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing string games today? Was this just like a random thought, or does it have some purpose to it? Thank you for ending the show with that question. <laughs> That's yeah. a great ending. What, but answer it. Why do you think? I don't know. That's why I asked. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fred, answer that, and then we'll sign off. Well, I use string games for multiple purposes. Um, as uh, we just talked about a bit, the, the collaborative teaching and uh, metacognition about your teaching, your own teaching skills that gets involved when you, 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 you're teaching in a group and a few people learn a little quicker than others and then they become teachers. And it, it establishes that cooperative and collaborative atmosphere within a group where uh, everybody is a learner and everybody is able to teach and share. One other thing I just wanted to throw in um, as yet another fiber extension, there's a, an amazing movement called guerrilla knitting. Um, oh, I love where it. Yeah, yeah. Folks yes. are using Knit knitting to create these fanciful constructions yeah. that are just amazing. And <laughs> we had an event at our local art museum, the Museum of Art and History in Santa Cruz, that they called Radical Craft. And I brought a group of high school students there, and we gave away strings and taught string games. And they also had a whole group of these guerrilla knitters who knitted a cover on the guardrail of the stairs to the museum. Mm -hmm. So the, cool. the museum became covered with knitting throughout. And, and it it's, a, it's a, I, as a knitter, <laughs> mm. I, I love that. And it's really interesting if you, in Toronto, I've seen it a few times where you, they're called, you nip bomb things. So you'll have uh -huh. people uh -huh. who just, knitted cozies on like bicycles or trees or random pipes you'll walk by and there's some knitting on it <laughs> um, so that's kind of fun if you go there's a website um or google nitta please they have a gallery of all the things that they've knit bombed like so they've knit bombed like uh, a, a bus um, wow. So you have a bus covered in knitting, and like the crazy <laughs> things that they've covered in, in knitting. It's great. So, Kelsey, part of the answer I want to give is this is fun. That's one Yay! reason. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Here's another reason, though. There's a lot of knowledge out there that kids have, that families have, that's not valued in school. So this is just like a way to kind of bring in some knowledge that, that people have. So I think that's important. And the other is, I just thought quickly, um, you can start anywhere and look where we can go with it. We can, you know, there's so many different places to go. So it's just another place to start, is, is what I would say too. Um, and I'm gonna make that our final comment and get off here. Um, we've been broadcasting um, out of the community of edtechtalk.com and um, that community was started and is still supported by Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo. And we're here every Wednesday night. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much, Fred, um, and everybody who contributed here tonight. Good night. Thanks, Thanks Fred. Fred. You Thank this you, was, Fred. That was oh. awesome. Hey, this Good was night. really fun. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> all right. Good night, Wonderful. all. Good night. Look for the tweets. <laughs> yeah. I want those tweets, Chad. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> I've almost gotten Jacob's letter. When I get it, I'll find someone to take a picture and put it on Google Plus. Okay. Good. Great. I'm close. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.